Jojo Kino and I'm a blogger and I write travel guides and lifestyle tips for ambitious, heart-centered women. So because I'm a blogger, I work online and I also work for myself. And one of the biggest challenges of that is being able to be organized, productive, proactive, and motivated. And one of the things that really helped me with that was bullet journaling. So today we're gonna talk about bullet journaling and I'm gonna show you seven spreads that I lay out on my bullet journal each month that helps keep me productive, on track to my goals, proactive, and motivated. Okay, real quickly, I'm gonna ask you to stick with me until the very end because I have something awesome for you that'll give you a lot of value for journaling. Okay. Let's get started. So this is my bullet journal. Um, I got it from Michaels and I can link all the products that I'll be using in this video um, below or in my website. But this is my bullet journal that I've been using for, I guess, the last four or five months. It's been really good to me. Okay, let's get started. Before I get into the productive spreads, I always start my layout with a title page. I'm creating this one for the month of October and creating a little calendar starting with Monday because Monday is the start of the week for me. What you do for your journal is totally up to you. You can be creative as you want to be, but for tutorial purposes, I'm keeping it minimal but with a little extra flair that you'll see in a little bit. So the first layout is very easy to make. It's a simple page that you fill in with a quote. I like to use a quote that reminds me to be a certain way or a lesson that I learned from last month. This month's quote is, bad form and consistency is better than great form and inconsistency. This reminds me to always put out blog posts and to go to the gym. It doesn't matter if I do things wrong because the only way I'm going to get better in blogging and get stronger in the gym is by being consistent. Remember how I talked about flair? I like to use washi tape for easy and quick decoration. You don't have to do this, but I like to think my bullet journal is an outlet for creativity, so I change it up every month. The second spread is a monthly layout or simply a calendar. This is where I put any important dates that I need to remember for the month. And what I found really useful for me is to write a master goals and master to-do list for all the things I want to accomplish that month. Looking at the month, I can schedule when I want to complete each goal and task. I also use this layout as my content calendar to plan out content for the month as a blogger, like blog posts, email newsletters, and Instagram posts. The third spread is a habit tracker. By the way, don't feel like you have to do all these spreads. I suggest you pick and choose the ones that would serve you the most, and you can arrange them in any order too. So back to the habit tracker. This is what I use to, you guessed it, track my habits. It's a great way to build on positive habits and start new ones where you would need a daily reminder. So I lay out the habits by day and track them by crossing out each square each day. A few things I like to track is working out, being creative, tracking my food intake, drinking enough water, calling my family, watering my plants, and checking my email. My fourth spread are weekly spreads where I lay out seven boxes for each day of the week. Remember the goals and to-do list from the calendar layout? Whatever goals and tasks I plan for that week, I copy it into the weekly layouts because I usually leave my journal open on the current week so that I'm always reminded of the things I want done rather than adding more things I didn't plan for that could distract me from my original plans. So for each day, I break it down to three boxes. The first box, which is two rows, I fill this in every morning to set my intention for the day. One day it's love, bubbles, and sunshine, and the next is gorgeous badass millionaire. Write whatever pulls you into being the best person you can be. The next box, which is a bigger one, is a list of tasks for the day. And you'll notice that three of these tasks have a star. I basically ask myself, what are the things I need done that will directly impact my income? I assign these tasks to the stars and make sure I do those first. Everything else can be errands or tasks that support the start task but are not that important. The third box, which is also two rows, is where I write what I'm grateful for. At the end of each day, I fill this in to be present to the things that made me happy. The empty space on the right side can be a place for you to write notes. I like to use it to write down any insightful thoughts that came up to me that week. And that's it for the weekly spread. Make sure to repeat this layout for however long the month is. The fifth spread is a monthly wrap up, which I'm sometimes lazy to fill out, but has actually proved to serve me the most whenever I do. I use this layout as an opportunity to look back at what I accomplished and because I'm not a perfect person, what I didn't accomplish as well. And sometimes the month passes by so fast that I forget what to pat myself on the back for. So I start with writing what I'm proud of myself for and fill this out throughout the next month. Next, I write what worked to achieve these things and what didn't work. Maybe what worked was leaving my 
my phone in another room while I worked so I was less distracted. And maybe what didn't work was not working out enough so I didn't find myself in a healthy state of being which made me less motivated to work. What makes doing this spread so great is that you get to be mindful enough to repeat the things that did work and do less of the things that didn't work. The next thing I write is what made me happy that month. That way I can do those things again next month. And the last is setting my intention for the next month. Like next month I'm going to be a gorgeous badass millionaire or I'm going to be generous with my love and be present to all the love and contribution everyone gives to me. Anything you want that pulls you into being the best version of yourself. So these last two spreads are for bloggers or any sort of content creator. Number six is a top post spread where I lay out the top performing posts of the month along with important analytics like users, page views, bounce rate, top countries, age group, and gender. Depending on the platform you use, this will vary. I like to record top posts from my blog through Google Analytics and log the page views and average time on page for each post. And then I record the top performing pins from Pinterest by link click rate so I know which pins actually brought traffic to my blog. And then I can replicate those designs or topic for future pins. The seventh and last spread is a content brainstorm page. And I like to write this on the opposite side of the top post page so that I can refer back to it to create content for the next month. So whatever content performed the best last month, I'll rewrite one in a similar topic. After writing these ideas down, I write down the keywords and key phrases for each idea. These will be the words I'll use in the title of the blog post and the blog post itself to make sure my post can easily be found through search engines and Pinterest. All right, thanks for sticking to the end with me. I hope you're inspired to bullet journal. If you're the type to fill in journals instead of creating the layouts yourself, I have these ready-made templates of the seven spreads that I talked about that's ready for you to use. If you check out the link before this video, you can start journaling to be productive in your own life. So click the link below, download it, enjoy it, use it. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and let me know which spread was your favorite. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. I love you. I'll talk to you soon in the next video. Be safe. Bye.